today we're going to be moving a suit jacket shoulder seam, a long awaited video. Jumping right in here, you see that I've got my, I've used my Taylor's chalks, my wax based chalk, and I marked this line when the suit jacket was on the customer. So let's rewind. When do we do something like this? An alteration like moving the shoulder seam on a suit jacket is a couple of things. One, not reversible. So really important to keep that in mind. Once you've done it, it's done. You can't go back out. You can't let it back out. So you do want to be sure about this. But when I decide to do this alteration, it's because this bulkier edge where all of the padding and seaming is coming together over the shoulder is sticking out too far past the actual shoulder on the customer. So if I put my hand right up against their shoulder as they're standing in front of me, and this seam is jutting out away from where their shoulder actually sits that I can feel, that's when I know it's time to do this alteration, okay? So what measurements do I need to take for this one? Most importantly, I'm gonna take I'm gonna roll back the collar here so that we can see the felt. And I'm gonna measure from the chalk line that I drew while the customer was wearing it in to where the collar begins. And for me, it looks like that's going to be five and a quarter inches. Okay, so write that one down. That's a really important one. Now, after that single measurement, unfortunately, from there, we're kind of getting a little more free form. We're gonna be using the guide of the chalk line that we drew while it was on the customer. So for me, I see that I want the line to come and smooth back in to the armhole that is already there and existing on the front relatively quickly. On the back, however, there must have been more fabric bunching up along the back of his armhole right here. So when he puts his arm down, there's too much fabric back there. And so as I'm making the alteration of the shoulder seam, I'm gonna move sort of the whole thing up and bring it all the way down to this point. Now, in almost every case with this type of alteration for the intent, we are not going to completely remove the sleeve. We're gonna leave about from here all the way under to this backside seam intact. We are only shifting the cap of the shoulder, of the sleeve into the shoulder. So where to begin? We're gonna get inside and we're gonna start removing from this point across back to this point. So, Let's jump inside and pull that sleeve out. Great. Now I've got my sleeve placed and I'm going to look at two different things. One, on this particular jacket, we actually don't have a full lining. So that'll be kind of convenient for us actually. Um, we do, however, have a sleeve lining. So there are a couple of different ways to access the shoulder and each suit jacket is built a little bit differently. So I will admit, we may end up coming back and opening a little um, hole in the underarm lining, but I'm gonna begin actually right up here at the shoulder. So I'm gonna flip out one more time and look and see where that is starting my chalk line again. And I only put a pin there just to give myself a little reference point of where I'm gonna begin seam ripping. So I'm actually gonna chalk that and immediately take the line, the pin out so that I don't stab myself. And then I'm gonna come over to the end point of that chalk line again on the outside that we marked and put a pin just to transfer the mark. This pin is serving no other purpose than transferring that mark. And we wanna get that back out of there so that we don't hurt ourselves. Good, perfect. And now, 
as I pop this back out, hopefully this is starting to look familiar. So let's start seam ripping. And we'll talk about also why do we seam rip from the inside? Why not just begin hacking open the shoulder from the outer? Well, because mainly if you make any mistakes, cut any little holes, anything like that, especially while you're getting to learn this procedure, they are really, really hard to fix, if not impossible. So instead, we're gonna do this from the inside. Also, the lining is often really lightly attached, more so than the outer seams, which you will come to find, have been sewn together many times due to the different types of interfacing and structure that's inside of that shoulder. So all of those different pieces have been sewn on multiple times, which means getting into that seam from the outside is gonna be tricky. Whereas this lining often is even reset professionally by hand. Okay, we've already reached our chalk mark, which was right there. I'm gonna remark that right there. So that's good. We can see that our sleeve cap of the lining is popped off. However, our sleeve of the outer is still attached. That's fine, that's good, we're in a good place. Now, before we go on, let's talk a little bit about the sleeve cap versus the shoulder. When we are resetting this shoulder seam, do you see how this sleeve cap has a nice curve there? Well, if we remove the same amount from the shoulder that we remove from the sleeve, do you see how that immediately gives that a terrible angle? I know that I'm just pinching it, but like you can see here the way that that little bit of that curve is being totally destroyed. When we're moving the shoulder seam in, we are primarily only taking from the actual jacket and moving this beautifully shaped sleeve cap intact into the shoulder because that's what our shoulder looks like. It's got that nice slight curve and we wanna keep that in the sleeve and just move it up so that the shoulder seam is sitting where it's supposed to be. Okay, let's go back inside. Now, I am going to lift, I've got a little tack here holding the front lining in place. Cool, I'm gonna pin that back and actually I'm gonna safety pin that piece of lining out of my way. You may or may not have exactly the same lining kind of set up on yours, so don't worry too much about where your lining is. Just sort of pin those out of the way. Now look at all that structure, boy oh boy. So we're looking at sleeve head interfacing, which is this curved, soft piece. And there's actually multiple pieces keeping that structure and maintaining that great curve of the shoulder. What we're gonna wanna do is come in between our shoulder pad and our shoulder seam so that we can find the connection point where we're actually gonna start moving that outer sleeve into the shoulder. And to do that, we're just gonna kind of explore a little. So be taking very good notes in your mind of where everything goes. Ooh, okay, I'm seeing it. Now, stop right here. Don't continue. Don't continue to remove all of this. Keep that all generally intact. I am just quietly exploring right now and getting to the point where I'm going to be able to move that. Because then we're gonna take this all over to the iron and get everything pinned in place. Good, good, good. Okie dokie. And again, just gently seam ripping down to where I see my chalk there. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to put some pins in and keep these different pieces like this, the shoulder head. 
attached to where it's supposed to be. However, I'm repinning it so that it's only attached to the sleeve instead of the sleeve and the rest of the suit jacket body where I just opened that seam. Starting to make sense? No? That's okay. It's gonna be fine. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit further here and keep pinning this in place. Now, you absolutely at this moment in time could have a needle and thread, preferably white, to baste these things together. Totally acceptable and probably actually um, the most professional way to do it, especially if you don't wanna stab yourself unexpectedly. But, and you'll notice sometimes when you open, often when you open a sleeve shoulder, you will see white basting, often cotton thread, that is holding a lot of these pieces all together because we are going in reverse of what we hope was almost exactly the procedure that they underwent when they were building this the first time. So in the direction that I am seam ripping right now, we are actually moving towards the front of the jacket. So I should come upon my next chalk mark soon. So when you're doing this, often orient yourself so that you don't get turned around and start seam ripping down under the armhole. We really, let me reiterate, really do not want to remove this entire sleeve. We really want to keep all of the action up top in the shoulder cap. It's just going to make your life better. We want to seam rip enough to make a smooth transition as we're pulling that shoulder seam in, but we would really like to keep as many pieces intact as humanly possible. Okay. We are almost there. Again, where these pins are, you could be basting that. You really could. But we're doing a little bit of what we, uh, what we call in the biz speed tailoring, i.e. whatever it takes to get the job done. <laughs> okay. And I'm doing that along both sides. One more time, let me reorient. Sleeve with its sleeve head or shoulder head interfacing. Jacket body with its shoulder pad flowing into the collar, okay? We are almost there. And I'm pulling away, you notice me pulling away little threads. There are a ton. There are a ton of different stitching lines in this procedure for the amount of times that it goes under the machine for various reasons during production. I really like to keep it very clean because when I get these seams all sewn back together, I really don't want all of those tiny little threads like hair sticking out at odd angles, making it look um, not only unprofessional, but also risking those getting wrapped up in the new stitching that I'm doing and making it messy and confusing for me as well. So I really, really, really suggest that you keep it clean. Keep everything clean, in place, pinned, pruned, and ready. Oh boy, that. Oh, and look at that. I'm going to remark our chalk line on the inside, but look at that. You're starting to be able to see where that chalk line is. That's great. That's where we're going to get to next. Okay. Alrighty. Let's come over to the iron and get set up to reset this seam. Okay, we are over here at the iron and this procedure is gonna require a lot of ironing and shaping. That is the one of the big staples of sewing a good shoulder. Uh, the orientation of the jacket right now is that it's on my arm board. This ironing arm board, boy, I'll tell you what, you are not gonna be able to do this without one of these guys. It, this procedure does not work flat. This arm board, exactly like it sounds, has a bunch of curves that are perfect for doing things arm related. So 
I've got a white piece of thread here. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to tie it off. That's not really necessary because it, the intent is to baste. And we are going to start at the back shoulder where my first pin is holding everything in place. And we are going to, oopsies, ha! We are going to baste right along. Baste, i.e., running stitch along where my white chalk line is for a couple of reasons. One, to hold everything in place so that I can take out those pins, but two, to give me that line. Because once we start ironing, that chalk line, I mean, it'll rub off. It may even start to rub off just by handling the jacket, which means we really want to make sure we've got a good, smooth line marked in by something that can't be ironed away. And this, for me, just some nice, plain white thread. And you notice, I'm taking pretty big stitches. These are really not exact. Again, marking the line, holding it together, but that is it. We're gonna do plenty of sewing to keep everything in place and together. So do not spend a lot of time on this running stitch. Ooh, fun fact. Let's clear something up just in case. I'm sure that you're smart enough that you already know this. Basting stitch, running stitch, all the same stuff. It's really not that crazy. Oh, that's looking great. So much better. Also, I'm using this hand. For me, it's my left hand. And I'm holding the shoulder pad and any other structure that's in the suit jacket side, the body suit jacket side and I'm smoothing that and holding that in place and taking the pins out as I'm pushing this through. You may want, do I have my symbol in here? I bet I do. Hmm? Hmm? Come on, there you are. I'm gonna put that on my middle finger here because getting this needle through this all of this padding is actually giving me a little trouble. And so I'm gonna use my thimble on my um, third, third finger, not my pointer finger, let's say that, to push this through. Cool. And let's just rotate on the arm board as we're going. And you can see I've reached the front here and I'm almost back to our seam. Great. And then I'm just going to cut that right off. I'm going to seam rip a teensy bit further just to meet up. Yeah. There we go. Oh, hey, look at that. You see that? That white thread right there? That is their basting stitch from when the factory put in this shoulder pad. So there you go you're gonna find a lot of that stitching in the shoulder of any jacket. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this right off. We're not gonna tie it off or anything. Again, just a baste. And then I'm gonna set my needle aside. And now, let's look at this shoulder. Pretty cool. Okay. As you know, we've still got our sleeve over here. Why don't I flip? I'm gonna pull this sleeve out to the right side to give us a little setup so that we can see everything again. Ah, there, that's making sense, right? Now, what we're doing is moving, like I said, this intact sleeve cap that I haven't even pressed because I'm loving keeping all of those nice curves there. But this is going to come up to our new line there. Right? So what do we do next? One, take one moment and look at the cap of your shoulder on your sleeve side and see if you can see this tiny snip right there. That is a factory marking. And that is where your shoulder seam will be on the sleeve. So when you're matching these back up later, that little snip is going to be realigned with the shoulder seam. Even though we're moving it up, 
it's still in the same vertical place. And that's where we're gonna put that. Okay, good, great, awesome. Now, let's get out some heavy tailor scissors. So, we're gonna come down here to our starting point. And we're gonna leave ourselves, well, what did they leave? They left just a scant half inch. So, we are gonna do just about the same. Oh, let me shave this real quick. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. This is a vegetable peeler. <laughs> and what I'm doing is peeling the edge of my chunk to give me a sharper edge. And perfect. <laughs> That's when I wanna make a, a nicer, finer mark. Great. Ooh, look at how thin. Oh, that looks great. Okay, perfect. And again, you are welcome to measure this. I am eyeballing it because, because I decided when I started filming these videos that I would just show you the way that I actually do it. So yes, I want it to be professional, but I also want it to be realistic. I want you to see what I would really do. And what I'd really do is eyeball it. So anyway. Let's get cutting. One more reminder, you can't go back, okay? So measure this seam one more time if you're not sure. Is it still five and a half inches to your mark, or five and a quarter inches to your mark? Yes. Good, this is gonna be fine. This is gonna be fine. Cool. And remember, we are only cutting from the jacket body side. And that is again, because we want to keep the shoulder cap of the sleeve intact. So don't forget, nothing has been sewn back together. Ooh, when it gets down to the bottom, we are just cutting through so much. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room. Great. All right, let's set that off to the side. I always keep my scraps until the end. It's probably just a paranoia thing, but it makes me feel better. I always wanna be able to really clearly remember how much I removed when I'm doing something, especially that is irreversible. Okay, now we've got our beautiful new shoulder seam marked, cut, ready to go. Let's flip it. Great, I'm gonna pull that sleeve back out again. In and out, in and out. And now, let me try to hold it so that you can see it. You're looking at the back of the jacket with its new shoulder seam over here and its sleeve cap still off right there. Great, now let's put these back together. I'm gonna push my arm board out of the way. I would just like to take one moment to recognize that basically this entire procedure actually isn't, quote, sewing. It is seam ripping, it is measuring, it is cutting, it is ironing, it is pinning. But sometimes the misconception with sewing is that sewing is sewing. And so much of sewing is not actually, quote, sewing. But when we say we're gonna sew it, what we mean is we're gonna do all of this stuff, which is good and fun. But I love procedures like this where we get to remember that there's so much more to it. There's so much more complexity and layers and I like that about it. Okay, back to the program. Shoulder seam. I'm actually gonna put a, nope, I'm gonna put a chalk line there for myself because I'm looking at the inside, remember. And I'm gonna go find that snip again. Can you see that right there? Snip. Would it help if I put my finger behind it? Yeah, just like that. Okay, cool. We're gonna put that. I'm smoothing the seam allowance from where it was originally attached 
back so that as we're stitching, we're stitching in the same crease that was left behind. I'm matching those two up. Awesome. Great. Now, I will tell you, depending on the amount of shoulder pad that you have, pinning might be a little bit of a nightmare. So I'm actually gonna go grab my plastic clippies. Could I just call them clips? Yes, I could. But it's cuter when we call them clippies. So, I'm going to place, checking one more time that that little notch is lined up with the shoulder seam. I would say that one placement, you don't get a lot of little, um, you don't get a lot of notifications during the scenario of where things go. Little marks get erased or ironed off or moved. And there's so much going on in the shoulder that that, that little clip, um, meaning that snip in the fabric and in the shoulder there, that's one of the only places where you're getting an indicator of does this line up where I want it to go. As I'm putting the clips in, I'm making sure that I'm making it as smooth as possible, but I will tell you this, it isn't, let me see if I can show you an example. Do you see this side, how it's rippled and wrinkled? And do you see this side, which is the suit jacket, how it's not? The way that this curve comes together and what we traditionally call and what many fear, the set in sleeve. This is a set in sleeve, obviously, you know that. And that means that the sleeve and the sleeve cap are quite a bit bigger than the suit jacket armhole that it's going into. To get that curve, there's a lot of gentle, I don't even want to call it gathering, easing, easing of that larger cap going into the smaller suit jacket armhole. And that is what we call a set in sleeve. We are setting that larger circumference into a smaller circumference. So as we're repinning, and the reason that I didn't press any part of the sleeve is because we need to get that fit back together and we wanna try to piggyback on all of the great work that they originally did when they were producing the jacket. So we don't wanna get rid of the steaming and shaping that was done originally. We're gonna to try to use that as we're moving. That will make more sense after I have sewn this and we get back over here to the iron. So if that doesn't make sense, do not worry, have no fear. But you can kind of see as I'm pushing them together, you can see that the circumference of the sleeve head and make sure you don't fold up any of the interfacing pieces on itself because that's gonna give us unnecessary additional bulk that is gonna hurt us later when we're trying to press everything nice and smooth. Good, good, good. Ooh, okay. Now, for the big <laughs> single stitching line we're gonna put in. Meet me over at the uh, sewing machine. I've got my whole sleeve, head, shoulder facing me, okay? Shoulder seam up right now. Now, two important things here. One, we must sew with the curve facing the needle. And the reason we need to do that is because we are not gonna be sewing flat. Despite common misconception, flatbed machine doesn't mean that we have to sew everything flat. What do I mean by that? We are gonna feed the material into the machine on the curve and then hold it up as it's coming out because we are literally trying to so in that curve shape. Second, very important, we are gonna start at the top. And the reason we're gonna do that is so that we can sew down each side and try to gently maneuver this larger sleeve circumference to fit the smaller suit jacket circumference. And we wanna move what little bit the foot is gonna press, the fabric that it's gonna push into the lower section of the sleeve instead of on top to get that gather. So I am choosing a center section. And of course, very important, we are definitely not gonna sew over these clippies. Okay, now, 
I'm lifting this up and I'm lifting this up and we are feeding it into the machine like this, which means I'm setting my chair high so that I can look down over it. Is this good for your neck and back? No, so don't do it for very long, okay? Take a break soon. But that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm feeding it in like this. And I am going to the left of that white basting stitch. That may be mine, I think it's from previous though. And that is just so that we don't have to take it out later because we don't want to be able to see it. I'm taking very few stitches and moving right along, trying to feel that everything is in place, but I will tell you what, we got a lot of layers in here, so we're just gonna have to check it later. But I am trying to feel with my fingers that it is smoothly feeding under the machine. And I wanna go to that point that we released the sleeve lining to. So I think that is about here, but I will have to go back out. And I am gonna backstitch here. Okay. I used green and a little bit of a short stitch width. I don't like how short that stitch width is. I'm sorry, stitch length is. I'm gonna bump that up to maybe a two and a half. Uh, but that's okay, I'm not gonna re-sew it, that's fine. I am, however, going to gently peek on the outside and see how we did. Great, we're close. I'd like to get a little bit closer. Yeah, I'd like to get a little bit closer here. So, perfect, I am actually going to release that stitching as well. I am gonna release that stitching. And the reason is um, that tiny stitch length is too, uh, let's call it clustered. It's creating too definite of a trench of stitching and I would like more space in between each time the needle coming down. So this is okay. We're gonna go back and give ourselves closer to the half inch. You can see my basting on this side. It's just that we do have to sew from this side. So let me grab my sit. seam ripper, stitch witcher. And I'm gonna pop that off real quickly. I'm reaching in between my two. I can tell that they're my sleeve and my outer because they're both that outer material. So I know that I'm cutting the right one and this is where we're gonna be extremely careful because any accidents right now are gonna be traumatic. Any little hole, no matter how small, that's clipped in this area is going to be setting over a high tension, high friction area, which is the moving arm inside of the shoulder. So let's be very careful. Almost there. I would definitely suggest, by the way, starting this procedure on a jacket that is either a nice cotton twill, wool blend like this one, um, or a full wool. And I'm gonna place my clips back because they're gonna be the most malleable and the most forgiving. So, I would not start with something soft. I would not start with a soft, thin wool or a linen. Um, all of them are possible. But let's not start there, you know? Let's, let's ease, let's ease in. I'm trying my very, very best to keep all of the edges, cut and non-cut, lined up. Again, smooth, okay. We are back for another round of, can we sew that? Okay, cool. We're starting at the same point again, but we're gonna come in a little bit further. So I'm gonna place the edge of my presser foot where that white basting is. Yeah, that's gonna give me a little bit of a Wow, 
I can feel it and hear it squeaking as it's moving through so many layers of fabric. I'm just trimming extra threads. Great. Ooh, this is gonna be better. I am excited. Almost there. And it is important that we meet up with our previous stitching because if we don't, we will be able to see that from the outside. So I'm actually gonna check on that right now. Oh, there we go, much closer and I'm pulling gently at the seam where the little, these little threads are where my basting was. And I'm making sure that I've matched up the stitching on the inside so that all the layers are combined. And in fact, they are. Okay, great. Let's now jump to the back of our arm and come forward, same stitch, same style stitch. And we're coming up to meet that stitching at the shoulder seam. I'm starting on their, on top of their stitching. And again, just being really careful to hold all of that sleeve cap in place because it doesn't want to be held in place because it is bigger and it's gonna fight you. And that is okay. We are up for the challenge. I'm really using my fingers as replacement pins. There we go. And I'm starting to look and see where there's the little thread of my stitching. So I'm just keeping an eye out for that so that we are gonna sew right on top of it match them up just exactly. Great. Alrighty. I'm just taking a look. Oh, that looks nice. I think I'm gonna be really happy with that. Now we haven't pressed or anything yet, but yeah, that's great. That is great. I really like that. Right now, as I'm sitting still here at the machine before I go over and iron or do anything, this is when I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look for a couple of things. Pinches or folds of fabric. At some point, one of the layers got folded up on itself. Those kinds of things, imperfections, they're gonna be really easy to fix right now while you're still sitting here. So I'm giving it a once over to look at that. But as you can see, the shape isn't perfect. That's where all of the pressing comes in. There are flat sections and hard sections that don't match this other very beautiful side. And that's okay. That's what we're gonna do next. So meet me over at the iron. I have got the sleeve head sitting on the edge of my arm board again. Sleeve lining still plopped back, still haven't done anything with him. He's getting lonely, but we're gonna visit him soon. And now with the sleeve coming off the end of the arm board, now I'm gonna start pressing. We are gonna flip to the outside, but I really like getting at this exposed seam before I move any further. That is beautiful. Oh, I love it. Okay. Now I'm ready to flip to the outside. So I'm gonna take this shoulder and pop it out like that. I want all of the seam allowances in the sleeve. So I'm using my hand to push all of them into the sleeve that way. And I'm gonna pull the sleeve back out just to help me maneuver along the edge. I'm placing the shoulder along the edge of my arm board. That is exactly what it's for. And this is why you need a really good wood 
wood and metal armboard so that it doesn't collapse on you. I know that you can get those collapsible ones and that's great, but that is not gonna do the trick for this because we need heat and pressure. High heat, high pressure when we are doing this true, true tailoring stuff. I'm using my fingers right now to keep pressing that seam allowance into the sleeve. All of the seam allowances are going into the sleeve. They're coming off the jacket body and out. So I'm using my hands to do that. And generally smoothing and pushing and massaging that shoulder over the edge. This is doing a couple of things, giving us a uniform round shape as we move while the garment is hot. It is also helping us keep that cap because as we're pressing it, we have the potential to crush it and we don't wanna do that. So we're just using that heat, using that shape to keep giving us that really nice smooth shoulder. Okay, I am ready to pull out my basting if I can. If you've caught it in your stitching, it's gonna fight you a little bit and that's okay. Let's see if I can just snip it here and pull it out kind of piece by piece. Not interested. There we go. Perfect. And we'll try to pull this guy out as well. If we can't, we'll just cut it really close. And same with the back. Good. I'm just popping the edges out and trying to get them Great, and last one here. Oh, he is really caught in there, isn't he? <laughs> that's okay though. This would also be the reason that you use white, so that's really easy to see when you need to pull it out later. And that is why they traditionally use white. And a white cotton, no dye, they don't want, to risk any of the dye getting um, kind of smeared on the jacket. Boy, he does not want to come out. That is okay. That is gonna be just fine. We will just snip it from the outside. Great. Okay, finally, let's give, yes, Let's give that jacket or that shoulder one more press and then I'm giving up. He's really holding on for dear life. Let's pull him there. Let's pull it there. Okay. Moving on. I'm going to hold it up away from me and see if I'm liking it. Yes. One of the other areas that I like to spend a fair amount of time pressing is where it comes back into the jacket, especially there on the front, because it is front and center, so visible, and we want that to be as flat and smooth as possible. One more important detail, if you do give this a few tries, you need to sew a second line, like I did. You notice, I always take out the previous stitching. You are only gonna keep the one that you want. So you can't keep extra lines of stitching. It's extra structure that holds that sleeve in place, probably in a place you don't want it to be. So it is very important that if you try multiple times, which is not a big deal, and you should do that to get it right, but you must remove the previous stitching. You have to, it's non-negotiable, okay? I'm also holding this in place as it's really hot and burning my fingers over the edge of the arm board to give it, um, kind of that rounded shoulder, that very English like pop of the, the shoulder padding. It's, it's not for everyone, and this customer in particular, he doesn't love that style. He just wants enough shoulder structure that is on standard and makes it look sleek and smooth and streamlined, but not that pop of the shoulder padding. All right, okay, now, Before we do anything else, let's give it a measure right now. 
because we can still make changes without any hard interference. Awesome. Great. Okay. We are right where we want to be. So now we're looking at the inside of the jacket one more time. I'm just going to use a little bit of steam to press those seam allowances one more time. We're just using it to press these pieces over though, so no need to press the iron really hard. We don't need the pressure right there. And then I'm using my fingers to smooth it down. Cool. All right, now let's pop our little sleeve cap back up. I'm gonna pull the sleeve out one more time. I know this gets so tedious in and out, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna bring, oh, look at that. That one's much easier to see. You see that clip? That's great. That clip is going to get lined up with our shoulder seam, which we can see right there, but covering it. This lining is really its whole, its whole job. It has not been altered at all. Its whole job is to cover this mess once we're done. So we're starting at the top again, and this is purely for even distribution. And again, I don't suggest sewing this by machine for two reasons. One, I don't want an extra stitching line. I don't want one more thing that's holding that shoulder in a really hard angle because, well, frankly, that's not the style right now. The soft Italian style shoulder is really popular and I love it. I think it's great. So I'm embracing that. Two, um, I really like hand stitching this down because it gives me a lot of freedom. Freedom to, uh, massage this lining in place. Often the lining is bigger. And so you'll even notice that there'll be little, little tiny puckers, little tiny ripples. And I want the freedom to put my little tiny hand stitching in between those puckers to get it just right. Because though the sleeve itself will move with the body and is often wool or twill and has that mechanical move, let's not call it stretch, but let's call it flexibility. The sleeve lining does not. And so it is going to be bigger than the other sections that it's being sewn to. And that's really important for you to know. And I'm coming down here, getting into there. I am always going to pin the sleeve lining back in place on the arm board. I find that doing this procedure flat is a absolute nightmare. That is a dull pin. And do you know what I do with dull pins? I throw them away and you should too. Dull, bent, broken, don't use those. They're cheap, throw them away. They're also gonna ruin your fabric. Tailor tip number 798. Good, there we go. Also perpendicular, you notice. I'm not putting the pins in this way. No way, that doesn't help us at all. You know why? When I am hand stitching in between, like I said, some of these little ripples, if it's a little bit bigger, which it will be, I want perpendicular pins to the angle of the armhole because for me, that is gonna hold everything equally in place, balanced, beautiful. I'm even gonna give that a little steam. Oh my God, it's so great. Switch to the other side. This is a really, this is a really interesting one. Um, you'll notice, or you may have noticed by now, that a lot of the more involved tailoring processes, like shortening the suit jacket hem, uh, or the collar, for instance, all of these pieces of the suit jacket and these tailoring techniques have surprisingly little sewing and a lot of pinning, placement, shaping, measuring, steaming. And I think we'll talk more about that in another video, why that is. Um, but in short, it's because I think that the thing that makes a tailor is not the machine. Having a sewing machine does not make you a tailor. You have to know, you have to know what you're doing. Anyway, these make you a tailor.
Okay, we are almost done. Let's lay this lining flat back. Again, remember, important, you may or may not have this piece. You instead will likely have this, which is the front lining panel, attached at the shoulder to a full lining in the back, which brings up an important point. You may be thinking at this point, well, there's only a partial lining in the suit jacket, so if I'm doing this to a full-blown lined suit jacket, what do I do? The same exact thing, but it's gonna take a little longer. <laughs> the process of maneuvering through a full lining, it's still the same, but I won't lie. It'll be a little, uh, what do we call it, meditative? Take a little patience. I am just slipping this lining in under and smooth. Good, okay. Coolio. People don't say coolio anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. That kind of age in yourself, you know, you gotta be careful. Okay, 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 okay. Now, this is gonna seem silly, but I wanna get out of the way of all of my friends that need to use the iron, and I'm gonna take the iron board with me and my whole setup over to the table for better lighting, and we're gonna wrap this baby up. Okay, we are back over at the table, and I've got a one single skein of black thread rolled over, tied, and I've still got my suit jacket up here on my handy dandy arm board. And I'm going to come down to my first pin, slide the needle to figure out where the stitching begins and then start just barely in front of it. I'm gonna hide my little knot inside of there. And then we're going to do just a little whip. So I'm coming across the edge. It is visible and then I'm coming up and then I'm grabbing, so I'm coming up like that, but then I'm grabbing a teensy bit here. So it's a little bit like a combination whip pick, because I'm whipping over the edge, but then I'm picking on the sleeve side where I'm just doing that little bit. And I will tell you, this, I find this very relaxing. And if this is not relaxing to you, this is your indication that you should do it more because the obstacle is the way. Look at how pretty that is. I like to do a matching and luckily for us, many suit jackets are lined with either a black based fabric or a white based fabric. And most of the time you'll notice that this stitching is almost always in black or white. As I'm coming up to the pins, I'm moving them. And so you see how you can see my stitch? I don't mind that. I want it to be clean. I want it to look good, so be aware that you're on the tiniest little sewing stage with this one, and that's okay. Also, I'm not jamming the needle all the way in and trying to grab all of the outer layers. I am just focusing on attaching the sleeve lining to the jacket body lining, and that is it. And again, with a fully lined suit jacket, this procedure is not different. It is the same. And again, it is visible and that is okay. I don't wanna hide every single stitch under something else and pretend that human hands didn't touch this. That is not my goal. As I'm taking my stitches, I'm also moving the jacket along so that the part that I'm sewing is always facing up towards me. And that just makes it easier for me. I'm also sitting at a table that allows me to put the arm board and the suit jacket right up close to my eyes so that I'm not bending down over it eat like this. I really want, I wanna keep my neck as straight as possible so I'm trying to use as high a chair as I can so that I don't have to hunch over. I really want to be here. And again, we're just trying to protect our future selves, our future necks, our future eyes, all of that good stuff.
we've gone all the way across our shoulder and we've come back to the, let's call it side back seams or blades. Those are on either side of the center back and they come up into the shoulder. And now I've got my finger back here because I'm just trying to keep all of this from showing. I don't want this black stitching to show anywhere except for the inside. So that's why I'm giving myself that little barrier. And then now I'm attaching this back to this underarm lining section. Ooh, don't tangle up on me at the end here. Great. Then I'm gonna take that out and perfect. And then we're just stitching until we get right back to where it is already connected. And then we'll knot it off and take a look at our handiwork. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm gonna smooth a little before I knot it off. Make sure everything's looking good, and it is. I'm really liking that. And I just took a little pinch of both the sleeve and the fabric lining, and I'm holding onto this loop right there instead of pulling it totally tight and sending my needle back through. And that's how I'm gonna knot that off. And then I'm gonna do that one more time. Take one little pinch and send it back through that loop, okay? Then I'm going to hide my tails by sliding the needle through the lining and trying to gently pull that knot inside. And that is how I finish off any time I'm hand sewing anything. All righty. Time for the reveal. Let's take a look at this though. Let's really put this bad boy on show. Isn't that beautiful? Gosh, I love that. Ooh, I love it, I love it. Okay, we're ready to flip it on out. And now, we've only done one side. Other side will be exactly the same. But I'd like to take this moment to look at the visual difference. Can we see it? Can we see the narrower shoulder there? I can, I love it. I can see that this comes straighter and this sort of arches out more. That's what the customer doesn't like. And this, this he's gonna love. Perfect. One more parting note on this alteration. Don't shorten the sleeve until after you've done this. When you pick up this shoulder, you're gonna lift that sleeve. So. This is the type of alteration that you start with. Do this first, see how it affects everything else, and then continue on your tailoring adventure. Thank you so much for joining us. Like, subscribe, all the things, and we'll see you at the next one.